October 31st. Been doing a little fret work on the, uh, the hardwood Avalon Telecaster. But this Halloween's time change, blue moon, Halloween all at the same day. So why not? Start the bee bender install today. Uh, I'm gonna do a little something different with this time. Uh, there's a few things with the Parsons Green. It's a great bee bender, and I I love them. Uh, you cannot beat this bender for the money. Some of the things I don't like about it that I'm gonna change on this one. Um, I don't like the lever mechanism coming around the outside of the guitar mostly because when you put it when you install it they say an eighth of an inch between the body and the lever that tends to put this part of the plate right on your string ferrules. I also don't like that this contour is a little bit off because of your adjuster mechanism. So you, it makes it almost impossible to inlay it, which makes it always look like it's just a uh, an add-on screwed onto the back of the guitar. I don't like that look. I like to build everything in. I like the finished look. So what I'm going to do with this bender install <clears throat> is I'm going to show you uh, a couple different variations that you can do. Uh, it's going to end up more like a Parsons White when I'm done. And you can take this as far as you want to. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is how you can cut this plate down and just make it a cleaner install out of it and actually be able to recess it into the body and make a nice finished look of it. And then I'm going to continue and modify the lever and do a uh, basically a Parson White install. So hang with me on this one and we will have some fun with this. Like I said, it's a great bender, but I want to do a little more with it. All right. What I've done is I took everything off the plate, and then I covered the plate with some two-inch wide asking tape. Interweave it kind of so that when you pull it off, you're not just pulling off one strip at a time. Uh, inevitably it happens and I'll never put it on a video of me pulling this tape off and trying to get it on to the poster board, which is the next step. But I have the mechanism. Nothing but the mechanism. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one way and I'm going to trace around it. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to trace around it again. That will give me the true size that the cavity needs to be. The cavity is going to end up being a little larger than that. I'm also going to have to cut out for the spring. So I'm just going to take felt tip marker, go around it. I did do around the pull cylinder with a pencil because that is going to be a very fine point and to put this into the body without the need of the plate and the screws holding it and supporting it is going to have to be an extremely tight fit. That needs to be perfect. Everything else we're going to work out. So I'm going to trace this and then I'll be right back. Okay. So. <clears throat> Remove the hardware, and this 
is the actual cavity size that we're going to need. As I went around, of course this tip is a little bit wide, that should give me plenty of room for my mechanism. At this point, if you wanted to, just use the standard mounting and just trying to trim the plate down, make it look a little better and inset it. You would simply uh, make a nice curve around some of these mounting holes. Yeah, I'll do that. That way, if you want this, then I can send it to you as just a PDF file. I'll certainly post it on our Facebook group page. You could follow the normal uh, Parsons Green instructions, drill your hole for your cylinder, use this as a template, cut the plate down, and you can see I me, mean, I don't know why they have so much extra. I know they have extra up here for the uh, adjuster, but back here, I don't know why they did that, uh, who knows. Okay. Transferred my tape to my poster board, took pictures of, well, scanned it so that I could provide you with a full scale copy. And I'll put that out there. I'm going to make some templates eventually for both styles I'm showing you. I'm going to cut this out for what I'm going to do, which is I'm going to not going to use the plate at all. If you wanted to continue to use the adjuster and you don't mind the lever being uh, hanging out over the edge, then you would use one template. If you're going to put everything inside the guitar and turn it into kind of a Parsons White like I'm doing in this video, I'm also going to have that template available for you that's the one I'm going to do now which I'm going to cut out my shaded areas I'm not going to worry about the tabs or anything like that we're not going to be mounting that plate on this guitar I'm okay got my hole to mark my hole I just I put the neck on put a nut on the neck took an old V string from the nut to through the center of the B string hole in the body. That's the most important part of this entire installation. It has to be centered. Then you have a little bit of leeway as far as, you know, I guess you would call it up and down towards the bridge or away from the bridge. You have a small amount of play on that doing things this way. So I simply transcribed the center line from center line, center line of our pull cylinder to the center line of the string ferrules, string holes, and then were that measurement and the B string coming straight from the nut through the center line of the B string hole where they intersected that's where I put my 15 16 hole to double check myself before I drilled it I put the plate on and it was a very good representation of why I don't like this plate um, it's okay but you can't you know, like we spoke about earlier you cannot actually put it into the wood it can't make it part of the body it's always just looks bolted on so our grommet fits nicely the barrel it needs to be opened up just a little bit uh, probably about a, a sixteenth of an inch I'm gonna do that by hand I want this to be an extremely tight fit before I do that what I'm going to do is 
lay my template down. I'm going to trace around it. I'm not going to have it come all the way to this point up here. I don't need this. I can stop it right here. That's when we're going to start freehanding and working out getting that lever in here the way we want it. More like a Parson White. It's going to be coming out at the center. Uh, so I'm just going to trace this, start freehanding. When I'm done with all this, I will have a good template that I can use over and over again, and I will make it available to you. So now it's just going to be a lot of routing. I'm going to set my router depth. at just enough, probably about a half inch for now, just enough where I can get this in. That's the whole secret at this point, is just getting this cylinder in place correctly to the right depth. The rest of it will come with that. Okay. Got it routed out. Linkage is working good. We're going to call this the end of part one. Uh, part two is going to be dealing with our lever mechanism. We are going to add a steel bar so that it will come out the front of the guitar. And we're going to set our depth. We're going to take out the bushing that it comes with, use a bearing, the bearing is going to slide over a shoulder bolt which is glued into the body. And then part three is going to be our final routing for our depth and uh, just getting the mechanism working really well, installing the spring, getting our moments right. So. I, Keep following me on this. I uh, hope that uh, I've given you some good food for thought. You know, just because it came on a plate doesn't mean it has to be on the plate, especially considering it's the same uh, cylinder as the Parson White. <coughs> Might as well turn it into a Parson White in our own little way. After I get all of this done, I'm going to have the templates available for you. And I uh, hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.